Hey everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll be going over bridging its concept, some of its settings, and actually setting up a bridge in a network. So let's get into the video. Alrighty, for this, we're going to use even G2Lab um, bridging, and you'll see kind of why, because we want to make use of additional equipment just so that we can get that bridging feel. So bridging in itself is a layer two concept. Um, it's something that I find pretty unique with Microtik because I'm not sure if you're aware of how routers and switches and all of that works exactly, but a Microtik router, you can actually bridge interfaces together so that they operate on the same broadcast domain because by default, each port on a router is its own broadcast domain. It's its own little thing where you can tag your VLANs onto individually. So each port is separated from each other. However, with bridging, you can essentially bond two interfaces. It's not exactly bonding. This is more or less, you can take two interfaces, put them into a virtual interface called the bridge, which will have its own MAC address. And then these two bridged interfaces will be able to switch traffic effectively. So they'll operate in the same broadcast domain. So traffic isn't then routed per se, it's actually being switched at that point. So that's something that's really unique and awesome about Microtik. And I'll show you how this works in a moment. Uh, all that we need to do is quickly start up some equipment here. So I've got a router, which is the router one. I've got a PC one and a PC two, which are actually just Microtik routers with PC icons. But what I want to do first is I'm going to assign IP addresses in this range, 192.168.10.0/24, to each PC. So .10 on the left, .20 on the right. And then I want to see if these two PCs can actually communicate with each other. Because if you're aware, any devices on the same switch can communicate directly to each other. They can ping each other, they can connect. They don't need a router to start that communication process because they can see each other on the same broadcast domain. So let's get onto PC1 quickly. I'm going to give this an IP address and I'm just going to do this from the command line for the IP addressing. So I'm going to do a IP address, add address equals 192.168.10.10 24. And that is going to ether two, I think. Let's just confirm. Okay, it does. And I'm going to do the same on PC2. So I'm just going to add an IP address. And that's going to be dot 20. So IP address add address 192.168.10.20 slash 24. And that is for Ether2 as well. So what I'd like to see is can these two PCs ping each other from the PC2, the PC on the right hand side. Can I ping PC1 on the left hand side? So let's try and ping 192.168.10.20. And that is currently failing. And the reason that's failing, even though both of these PCs are connected to the router already, the router doesn't have bridging enabled at the moment. So each PC connects as if it's in, an, in its own broadcast domain. So let's quickly set up bridging. And this I'll do via Winbox quickly. All right, so I'm connecting onto Winbox and I'm gonna to connect to R1. And we're going to zoom in now. And to get to the bridging, you go to the bridge menu. And then from the bridge menu, on the bridge tab, you can create the virtual interface. And with ports, you're effectively going to assign ports to a specific bridge. And this is really the base of what you're going to be doing with bridging for the MTCNA. So let's create a bridge first. And this bridge, I'll just call this my LAN underscore bridge. And there's various things you can do here. Fast forward is enabled by default. You can turn that off, but if you turn that off, it's not really going to work like a switch anymore, but um, leave that on. You can set up stuff like STP. Uh, by default, it's got RSTP enabled, um, but I kind of advise having STP enabled because if you accidentally set up a loop, it's also going to cause quite the havoc on your router as well. Uh, we're not going to do any VLAN filtering or anything on this. This is just to create this bridge. So when I click on apply, it creates a bridge. It adds a virtual MAC address for the bridge. It gives a MTU size and <laughs> that's really it. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to assign ports to the bridge. So on my topology, I can see Ether2 goes to PC1 and Ether3 goes to PC2. 
So those two ports I actually want to add to the bridge because they'll form part of that land bridge now that it'll allow those two pieces to have their traffic switched between each other. So it's not actually being routed. So let's add ether two to the land bridge. And we're not gonna tweak any of these other settings. I'm just going to apply this. And we're going to add ether three to the land bridge. And done. So now we've got those two ports going to the PCs. They could have been servers, they could have been other switches, they could have been whatever but they are now bridged together in this land bridge. And if I look at my interface tab, I can actually see there is a land bridge there and I can see ether two and ether three have gone into slave states as well because the land bridge is kind of now the actual interface, whereas ether two and three just operate as slaves inside that bridge. What I want to do now is go back to that PC. So let's go back to PC um, two, which was the PC on the right. And let's see, can I ping across now, now I can ping across. And I wanna show you something very cool and interesting. If I go to my IP addresses, I do not have 192.168.10.0 slash 24 configured on the router. This is all traffic now that's being switched between the two PCs. So PC2 is sending its packets up to the router and the router just says, okay, cool. Um, I'm just gonna switch this to uh, PC1 because I can see there is an entry for that. So traffic is now just being switched. We're not even routing, we're not doing anything with the router, it's just passing the traffic between the two ports now. Um, and with the bridges, it can be very useful because you can do various things with bridges. You get stuff like you can, they get called transparent bridges, where you can put a Microtik router between switches, for example, and then you could see what is actually happening on the network because you get that full control on Winbox to see what's happening with the traffic. You can do stuff like torches and you can, you know, figure out if there's some type of problem on the network a bit better, um, but you don't need to put it on as a transparent bridge, uh, but this might be useful for stuff like, um, like I said, if you have multiple switches and you want to bring them in on the same broadcast domain, that is one use for it. Another use could be you have this uh, switch down here on the left. Um, let's say the PC one was actually a switch but the PC2 was a server, but your switch ports was full, but you still wanted that server to be on the same range as the PCs, then you could effectively just um, bridge a port on the Microtik and everything will wor work as if it's on the switches. So that's really, really nice. Another thing I just quickly wanna cover with the bridges is the settings. So if we go back to bridge and we look at the settings tab, with settings, the biggest thing that you're going to want to take here if you are going to use it is use IP firewall and we'll cover more of this when we get to the firewall section. But if you don't have the use IP firewall ticked, then you will not be able to do anything with the firewall on the micro tick with any traffic passing inside the bridge itself. If you want to manage that traffic or do stuff with the firewall with it, even stuff like um, queues, you're then going to want to just enable this use IP firewall. All right. So, in essence, that covers bridging on a Microtik, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next lecture. See ya.